Wrestling has had a funny relationship with the Switch. It started badly with WWE 2K18, a buggy mess of a game, and then it's slowly improved since then with games such as Action Arcade Wrestling, Wrestling Empire, and Retromania Wrestling. Now though, AEW Fight Forever enters the ring and it comes with a AAA price tag. That's going to be $60 or your regional equivalent. So the big question today is, is it going to be worth the cash? Let's find out. My name's Alex, this is Switch Corner, and if you do enjoy the video today, consider subscribing. It helps out the channel a huge amount. So first up, the career mode, and here players can choose to use a custom wrestler or select from the roster of 47 male and female wrestlers. Now, while the roster offers a good variety, using a custom wrestler is recommended as it allows for character development, so think unlocking new abilities that can then be carried over to other modes. Now, I chose to take CM Punk on this journey in career mode, and overall, I'd say it left me with mixed emotions because while the idea of reliving the early years of AEW and participating in major pay-per-view events is definitely a good one, the activities between the matches are definitely questionable. So how it works basically is between pay-per-views or big events, we have a five-day window into each city and players can choose from activities like meeting the press, going out to dinner, sightseeing, playing mini-games or training at the gym. And these activities, they are meant to impact your stats such as motivation, health and injuries. Often though, they honestly just feel dull and lacklustre. Most of them just consist of brief animations with a somewhat edgy connotational tone, like showcasing a dish from a specific state or making a forced connection to historical figures like Lincoln or the Hockey Museum. Furthermore, the dialogue in these moments is just simply awful. The career mode then needed two modes in my opinion, not just one, and that is one for players that didn't mind this rubbish, and one which just kind of automated everything and got into the action playing, you know, maybe video cutscenes of historic matches along the way, because these brief sequences I definitely did enjoy. Now it does get a little better eventually as well when it introduces the idea of facing matches in midweek kind of late night shows, just for extra stat boost, because Really, it's the wrestling that we are all coming for, and it almost feels like they kind of forgot this focus in this offense. Unfortunately then, character customization in the game as well is quite weak. While it includes the basic features you would expect, it definitely feels limited compared to the standards are set by other games. Personally, I found focusing on clothing accessories offered the most options for customization. Here, we can tweak our clothing for different scenarios, such as street attire, during our entrance, and of course then, during matches. It's topped off then with a ring entrances as well, but these, they are extremely brief. Thankfully, where I do think AEW starts to succeed is in its match types. Under Exhibition Mode, you will find seven different match types alongside a different rule set such as Lights Out, and it includes fan favorites such as Casino, Battle Royale, and Exploding Barbed Wire Deathmatch. It also allows you to access unlocked minigames here from the Road to Elite Career Mode, and enter training, which is absolutely going to be worth your time. Just go in there and practice those movesets. The minigames... They're kind of like a fun distraction, they won't keep you coming back, but I will say they're a very unique feature. During these matches as well, you can customise them further, but the big ones here will be you can turn blood on and off, though it only really appeared for me during the barbed wire match, and it's also extremely tame. And then you can change items such as the arena, the referee, and I also neglected to mention this, you can actually make your wrestler vegetarian if you don't want to see them chowing down on a massive burger. You can also find online play from the main menu with ranked and casual modes, though I was unable to test this during the pre-release window. And the game also features a challenges, so think of these as built-in achievements. They do though refresh daily and weekly for rewards, and there's also a store that you can spend in-game earned currency. So all of this said, how is the wrestling? And this is not going after the WWE 2K crown for realism. It is focused squarely on the fun factor. And for me personally, that is what I want. And this would be best compared to genre entries from the N64 era, such as the amazing WWE No Mercy. And that makes absolute sense because it comes from the same team and it's almost acting as a spiritual successor. It's easy enough though here with the controls, we can deliver our high strike, kick, grapple, run, Irish whip. We can implement actions such as pulling weapons from under the ring, though I do wish it featured here a few more maybe options. And we can refer send both grapples, attacks, and we can block. The rest of the game then is really experimenting with different button combinations and directions to uncover each wrestler's moveset. And there's even a handy list from the pause menu that will guide you through this process. 
I thought overall of the selection of moves to hand it was solid and the matches are really a combination of damage taken and match momentum detailed at the bottom of the screen and here we get a bar that is a little tough to understand at times honestly but basically it's identifying how are we doing, can we maybe pin an opponent or will we maybe submit and can we pull off a finisher, these are all implemented with a quick push of the d-pad. Should all of this sound a little too complicated as well, you do get a few options such as casual mode and easy countering and you'll find that again in the options menu. Naturally then, some matches are stronger than others. I enjoyed any 1v1 scenario the most. Targeting gets a little problematic when it's multiple. You'll be pressing the left stick to switch your focus. And then I did have issues in tag team mode where the game will force you out of the ring if you jump in and characters just kind of lie down anywhere and start rolling down. It looks like, I guess, so unusual. Additionally, these tag team matches drag on because when you pin an opponent, the referee just takes forever to get to the ground to start the countdown. And this will prove, I expect, particularly problematic during online offense where no doubt players will be able to exploit it. Other problems, it can get a little glitchy at points, nothing to the level of WWE 2K18, do not worry about that, but often the ropes can kind of glitch out, occasionally you seem to connect with thin air, wrestlers will clip with the environment, and occasionally the game will actually stutter for a second momentarily. It's particularly noticeable when a new wrestler enters the arena, or when an in-game challenge is completed and flags on a screen. I'd love to see a quick patch to correct this, as it definitely impacts immersion, though it's far from game-breaking. I think another issue then is difficulty, no matter what option I chose, it feels a little too easy to exploit your opponents, at least when you know it's not player controlled, and no matter who you face, I was often able to use the very same combination to block them basically out. It ended up feeling a little like you could succeed simply by spamming the basic attack buttons, and quite frankly, I often resorted to that. I imagine with a real world opponent, that would probably not be the case. I do like though more challenge personally, and this has me questioning how frequently I will and now return. You know, no skill required that is great fun for, you know, experiences, but you also want a little of depth to pull you back. And I'm not sure this game quite has that in place or at least where I would like it to see. It's also lacking many of the modern additions we are used to, or at least I am, such as multiple locations. The outside of the ring has very little to interact with, and when a wrestler is grappling to ringside, you can't even hit them out. Only a grapple will loosen their grip, which feels extremely unusual. And you know, I found this out during Battle Royale. I didn't realize it until I saw a CPU use this strategy as I'd been kind of needlessly punching thin air. I was also disappointed to find the game is limited to four wrestlers at one time, so it really doesn't capture the magic of a Royal Rumble. Overall though, with all of these complaints out of the way, I still do really like that old school gameplay design that it's targeting. I think the absence of many modern additions will put some off and I absolutely get that, but I think the biggest compliment I can give this one is, every time I was actually in a match when I was wrestling, I had a massive smile on my face. Visually then it's a mixed bag, I really like the different character animations in matches first of all, I think they do look really good and specials always provide that satisfying visual. The arenas do pick some nice designs and no doubt fans are going to recognise the locations even if they are I guess somewhat basic. Problems for me, the cutscenes in career mode again just horrible, there's a noticeable pixelation on the switch, especially during character selection and menus where that resolution is extremely soft. Then as well, the big thing for me, they kind of struggle to capture the atmosphere of a match. You know, occasionally we get a few replays, which is a nice touch, but I guess it never feels like a true pay-per-view. The location sizes are nearly always the same. There's no broadcast style angles for the gameplay and the entrances are nothing more than a few seconds. Wrestling is all about the spectacle and I don't think this game truly knew how to tackle that. The audio, however, fares quite a bit better. There's some recorded dialogue and the performances, quite frankly, go from horrible to poor. And commentary is brief, but I love the sound effects. Hits sound heavy, the ring sounds particularly good, and when the crowd does get going, it's one step in the right direction of delivering that pay-per-view vibe. The music is a mix of kind of rock music for the most part, and I do like the genre, but wasn't a fan of the selection here. It's kind of cheesy at best, but there is a jukebox, so you can choose the tracks you do like and remove the ones you don't. I personally turned it off entirely and just played my own. So overall, the effort here is clear. The wrestling, when it gets going, it is fun, and it definitely delivers something arcade-esque. I'm just not sure if that's going to be enough, and I would have felt a whole lot better, maybe with the pricing at least being more around that kind of $40 mark rather than the AAA 60 they've targeted. That said, though, look, if you can commit to the online play, it's going to be worth a look. Just don't expect perfect, rather a respectable first attempt with clear teething issues and problems that will need to be addressed. 
a little more variety as well would have gone a long way. I would have liked more special event types and maybe a bigger selection of weapons or even unexpected scenarios such as match interruptions. The big downfall though, in my opinion, it's going to be that presentation. It tries but never quite manages to capture the spectacle of the sport. I don't mind the retro aesthetic they've gone for, I just think they could have done more environmentally. All of these complaints, however, I still had a good time. When it got going, as I said, I couldn't help but smile. The action is easy to pick up and play, and I think the fans, especially those that grew up around the N64 era like myself, will be happy. Today, it's a good 7 out of 10 from me. Problems? Absolutely. But this game, it has heart. So with that, hit subscribe. Join us here for reviews, deals, and news daily. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks, everyone.